Welcome to the Honest Designers Show, your transparent look into life as a modern designer. My name's Tom Ross, and I'm the founder at designcuts.com. And this week, I'm joined by American retro design expert, Dustin Lee, and the ever-talented South African illustrator, Lisa Glanz. This week, we're joined by Dina Rodriguez from Leather Shop. And I'll be honest, I am especially excited to have Dina on the show. She is somewhat of a hero of mine when it comes to creativity and social media. And today, we're going to be chatting with her about authenticity, confidence, and being yourself as a designer. So without further ado, let's get into the show. Dina, what's up? Uh, uh, we get it, get it. Uh, uh, let's talk uh, on a podcast. Uh, it's Honest Podcast. Uh, honest Design Podcast. Loving it. All right. I was like, can we make up a jingle at, like right now here on the spot? Because that's what I feel like the one thing that's missing from this podcast. That's true. Done. Totally done. We're using that from here <laughs> on out. Honest Designers Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Put some retro graphics. Have Dustin do one like a little animated dude. The Honest Designers Podcast. I just think it'd be really cute. <laughs> it's already my favorite start to any episode Yay. there you go um dino i'm so glad thank you for jumping on um do you mind introducing yourself for the few listeners out there who should know better who aren't familiar with you <laughs> for shame how for dare shame. you not know me <laughs> yeah a uh, professional hand lettering artist and illustrator run a business called letter shop uh spelled with two p's and an e like an old ice cream parlor uh, primarily focus my art around subject matters like body positivity, cannabis, I know, uh, actually starting to do a new sex positive movement. And then on top of just doing uh, motivational phrases for creative souls, but with lots of curse words and naked ladies, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I think that pretty much like does it. it. Does yeah. that seem like a good, <laughs> I was like, I should have planned this. <laughs> so that, that's a woman who's got the elevator speech down. Yeah. Yeah. She had that. I'm confused by the way, sex positive. Sex positive. So like sex is a good thing. I'm not. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That. So, you know, no slut shaming, none of that kind of stuff. Yes. Like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> no slut shaming. Uh, just like, yeah, sex is cool. Have you had sex before? Me too. Really liked it. <laughs> 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 but that stuff's kind of like that. not safe for work or not exactly Instagram appropriate. So that's going to be a newsletter exclusive. Yeah. So, so I can't actually show like, you know, tits and pussy and that kind of thing. So I'm going to yeah. get to that because I know you've been getting like <laughs> stuff banned on um, on Instagram. Yeah, getting so, deleted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that sucks. Um, so I guess like in the theme of this show, authenticity, being yourself, confidence, all that kinds of stuff. Like you are, if someone mentions that stuff, honestly, you're the person that springs to mind. And I'm trying to champion this myself. I think we do a pretty good job of it. You know, we're very much ourselves on the show. We put our truth out there. But you are the person who I know out of everyone where you just don't seem to give a fuck. Like you, you <laughs> literally, you're, it's like you have no filter, but in a really cool way. So it's like, you're just putting out whatever's on your mind, whatever's in your heart, whatever you feel unashamedly. You're like, this is me. This is what I think. If you don't like it, it's not for you. And if you do, you're my people. Is that like yeah. a fair summary you think? Yeah. I mean, I obviously give lots of fucks about lots of things, but what people think about my art isn't one of them. You know what I mean? Especially if it's like coming from my own experience, like as long as it's honest and I hate, I hate the word authentic. I feel like it's almost like, it's kind of like feminism. It's like, it's just, you can't say it without someone in the room kind of cringing. You know what I mean? It's been rendered meaningless by (laughs) like, oh, you guys don't forget to be authentic on Instagram. Like, what does that even mean anymore? Um, Yeah. But I do think there is something to be there, said there about go half just my doing post you. There, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's something to be said about just like doing you and just being yourself, with, you know, with or without a filter, whatever. And just I think people can tell whether or not mm-hmm. you're being another like fake in- influencer or if something really came from the heart. You know, I totally agree. Um, do you mind going like a little bit deeper on that, like how it's playing out for you? I, I just think so many people that listen to the show, so many creatives that we talk to. They're racked with imposter syndrome. They're very insecure. They don't have that much confidence. And mm. I just, I want people to learn as much as they can. Like, how do they get there? Like, how did you get there? Have you always yeah, been like that? Yeah, have you that? always been like, like that? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely like baby steps. Like, um, 
I talk about like when I first got into hand lettering, I felt like I was doing the same stuff that everyone else was doing. Like you tend to be in an echo chamber where you're surrounded by your peers and your competition and you can't help but like mine. Like, oh, that's a cool phrase. I'll just copy that phrase. Oh, look at that style of typography. I want that too. And you kind of like grocery shop, like as you're going down your Instagram feed. Um, And I realized that I wasn't really drawing from my own experience. I was just like reinterpreting, like reinterpreting what other people were saying, which didn't really work out that great for me. Like I've been on Instagram for quite a long time and it's only been the last year or two that I actually was able to grow like an extra 30, about 35,000 followers. So it's just like, I don't know. It started with like a small step, like, okay, I'm going to start using curse words. So instead of it being like dream big, work hard, it's dream big and work your fucking ass off, (laughs) you know, Mm -hmm. just trying to make it. And what was that point? Like what triggered that? Um, I think just frustration of seeing like all of the same things in my own feed and just kind of like, I just want something different. Like I want to see the kind of content that I wish I could wear on a t-shirt that I can go ahead and print out on my wall. And then I realized like, why am I not just creating things I wish existed in the first place. Like, why am I waiting for someone else to do the thing? Like, I'll just do the thing. Um, there's and I think a guy that whole I process follow. was like, yeah. Um, yeah, I was going to say, there's a guy I follow where he basically says, if you're putting out what everyone else is and you're trying to conform in that way, you literally become invisible. And I think that's very true. That's why so many people are seeing no traction, getting no attention on their work. Well, you're yeah, you're, you're quite literally your... camouflaging. I mean, yeah. by yeah. definition. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So sorry, Dina. Um, keep going. Like, oh, I was there. just gonna be like, it all started. <laughs> it was a dark <laughs> night in September, three years ago, and I was like, man, I love the word fuck. It's so sexy. <laughs> the F. Oh, you can put curls and licks on it. You can make it look badass. And I remember, like, I did a tutorial of like a wolf head. It was like right at the beginning when I was making my lettering adventures workbook series. I think it was the second issue ever. It was black letter, and black letter is pretty like a fucking badass style. So I, I did that one. A, yeah, you do. Oh, yeah, I gave it to you at Creative South, I think. You did. Um, that I was right when I those. started it. I'll send you one, Tom. Okay. Um, All the hearts like, for you. Everyone, everyone on the podcast gets one. Nice. Yay! Um, yeah, Appreciate so I was like, I'm not going to single out Lisa, like, except Thank for you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Although Ian definitely doesn't get one because he's not here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, I'll still send one to him if he wants one. Not that he needs it. Um, but... <laughs> Yeah, so the tutorial was like draw uh, an animal head and then a curse word on top of it. So for me, it was like this really kind of tribal looking, uh, I'm trying to remember, I had just had in my head like a a tiger, I think. No, a wolf. Wolves are better than tigers. Boom. And then I wrote fuck. And it did fairly well on Instagram, like just posting the process of it. And then other people liked it. And then other people were writing like shit and asshole and cunt and all this stuff (laughs) on like really powerful kind of like badass different animals. And I was like, people like this? Can I keep, can I keep making it? <laughs> you, you, you mentioned seeing the same thing a lot of times, places, and um, did you start doing that? Be, like, and I I don't I'm not judging either way. 100. percent I'm just curious. Like, okay, do you it's talk like off. that in real life? <laughs> do you talk like that in real life? Like, would you literally say it like that because you really cuss a lot, or were you like, I need to like kind of like sometimes with retro supply, I kind of um i don't know cheese amplify it, amplify my, my personality a little bit for the point of doing that do you feel like you amplify it a little bit because you know that that's something that will help to stand out or is that quite literally the exact person <laughs> that you are yeah i don't know if you've ever talked to me I, I curse a lot uh even there's been a couple times where i've you know been the main speaker on stage and they're like, don't curse. And I'm like, what's up, motherfuckers? Like, right when I get on the stage. Um, and I'm just getting looks like we're never inviting her back. But then it ends up being a great talk and no one really cared. But Dina, can I, I do tell think... you something? Sorry. Our, yeah, what? Our, our podcast guy who edits this, I talked to him before recording this. And we decided to make the decision. You know, on iTunes, you get like the clean podcast, the family friendly mm-hmm. one and the other one. Oh, right. We're literally changing it to be like, more of an adult podcast because I didn't want to put the poor guy through having What's to bleep you out because yeah. I think his finger would have like fallen off by the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> it was something I was curious about. I'm like, I don't remember them cursing in their podcast. Like, I don't know if that's okay. Well, if it's well it gets be bleeped bleep, out, bleep, but bleep like, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of work. I was like, you know, we're honest. This is the honest designers. So why censor mm-hmm. ourselves? Mm. Yeah. I was, well, I, I, like I have to be people. honest. Now that you are doing that, Tom, 
<laughs> you might be unleashing something in me. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> We've unleashed the kraken. Um, but yeah, sorry, I totally cut across yeah. there, Dina. You were kind of saying to Dustin's question of like, are you amplifying yourself or is it? Yeah. yeah. True. No, because I was saying like, there is something to be said with cursing. I think it was a comedian that said this, that I don't curse because I'm vulgar. I curse because I want you to fucking pay attention. And yes. I think that's really powerful because, you know, like in a society where advertising's everywhere and there's typography and lettering is more and more predominant and there's so much competition, like what can we do to get people to pay attention? And, and I like to do the things that you're not supposed to do. Like I like to draw nudity. I like to talk about sex. I like to talk about cannabis. I don't like to curse. These are things like that sometimes that. hurt my account, <laughs> you know, uh, but it, it's, it does feel very honest for me. Yeah. But it it's does. Like, as soon as you said you got like banned, like not banned, but like got some things deleted or whatever. I was like, that just makes me like the account better <laughs> because, because, because you have a lot to lose. You have a lot of yeah. followers. So doing that, you're saying it's more important on myself than I follow conform to Instagram. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, that's really re- nice, Lisa. You yeah. and I were talking um, before this about. I think you can tell when people fake it. So if Are they're just trying to do me? stuff to get attention, or it's not congruent with their personality, you can tell, and you get real kind of icky feeling from it. But as I said at the start, with you, it's literally like there's just no filter. It feels mm. so truthful to who you are, and it is like you know we haven't met in real life, but like we've been talking quite a lot on like you know, one hour Zoom calls, like chatting through stuff. You send me voice notes on Instagram and it's all you, you know, it's all very consistent. And I think that's what comes through in your content. And so I guess back to my point of for all the insecure designers filled with imposter syndrome, what would your message be for them? Like how do they get out of their head and drop that filter and just kind of put their true self out there more? I mean, I think about it from a very analytical marketing mindset. Like you need to make a lot of art or let's say content, right? In order to figure out what works and what doesn't. And you need that data in order to figure out whether it's the right path or the wrong path. Now, Mm. there's something to be said when it comes to, I'm just going to create for my own imagination. I'm going to be, you know, more myself. But a lot of people are like, what the fuck does that even mean? Like, how do I be more myself? But it's really just like, you know, find the, the topics that are important to you. For me, it's all things that I personally struggle with. Body confidence, right? Cannabis. I smoke weed every day. Smoke weed every day. And, oh, no. <laughs> and right. And, you know, just really talking about things like, you know, having to deal with mental health since I suffer from anxiety and depression. Now, these are things that are really important to me. So it becomes natural for me to be able to express those things. And because if they're relatable to me, they're most likely going to be relatable to other people. Oh, yeah. But the oh, yeah. issue is, but when you're in that echo chamber and you're just repeating and you're just it's just a mirror being cast on your work, of course, it's not doing well because it looks like everyone else. And I know it's not coming from you. And just saying, like, practice makes perfect is a really great statement for, like, other creatives and artists. But unfortunately, unless you, you know, provide educational content or you have a podcast like this, those people aren't going to pay your bills. Mm-hmm. So it's like how you get over imposter syndrome is you kind of have to be a little bit fearless, like just make from your own experience, talk about things. I'm not saying you have to like wear your heart on your sleeve in order to be popular on Instagram. You could talk about your favorite comedians, your favorite food, how much of a, like a garbage indoor, so like anti-social person that you are, you know what I mean? Whatever it like makes the most sense for you. And then Can I? you, cre- Oh, sorry. Good. Oh, go ahead. And I was just going to say like, you create that content consistently. You have analytics. Just look at what the people tell you. Your audience will tell you if something is working, it's not working. Your audience will tell you if they want to buy a print or if they want to buy a t-shirt, even though a lot of them don't. But still, the input's nice. (laughs) (laughs) So you just use that data and do more of what works. But you have to take the time to really think about a strategy and then looking back and making sure that, okay, what's working, what's not. And if something failed, figure out why. Time of day. That's more practical. Hashtag all the things. Yeah. Can I ask you about that? So I feel like one of the disadvantages of um, getting to some degree of, I don't know if you call it success, but just having a larger platform of people yeah, is that um, the consequences feel more dire if something is bad um, or offensive. So like, for instance, like when I send out an email, I'll think, oh gosh, if I use this cuss word, is this going to quadruple my unsubscribers or am I going to get all these spam complaints, which are going to affect my deliverability? And the same thing applies across social media and different things that I do. Um, yeah. How how has that worked out for you in the past? Or or how do you parse that in your brain? How do you work brain? past that? Yeah. Because yeah. I have that same dilemma. 
Um, I don't I really worry do about it too much, actually. Uh, like, okay, so the first time I made a cannabis piece, for example, I lost 200 followers in a day. People were offended. I got a bunch of DM complaints, like, oh, this makes me uncomfortable. This triggers me, these kinds of things. But within that month of me starting what I called my babe meme series at the time, I gained 10,000 followers. So you know mm. what I mean? Like, it mm. just, you weren't my people and that's okay. Mm. And like, just because you follow me doesn't mean you have to agree or even like my content. If you don't just unfollow me and find someone else who can inspire you. And that's totally fine. It's pretty sad. Just feeling like, yeah, like just own it. Like it just wasn't a right fit. So there was never some nightmare scenario that happened. Like I, I'm very anxious. Like I, I relate to your anxiety thing. Like I have to go to therapy for panic attacks and anxiety. So I'm like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen if I do this? Are they going to call the police? Are they going to call the Instagram police? Am I going <laughs> to like get Instagram kicked off police. of my email server because they're like, you're dro- you're destroying our email thing? Like so, nothing bad ever happened. I just need to I'm- be reassured. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nothing really dire happened. I mean, I've had some really awful things happen because of what I'm talking about. Like I, my website was hacked because when I was live streaming on Twitch and they replaced uh, the homepage with a picture of me sucking dick. That's oh, something that happened. Wow. I'm totally dead serious. I never heard but about that. Trolls Sorry, tried to swap wrong. me, which means they like call the cops and tell them that you are selling drugs. So that way, when you're doing your live stream, people will bust in your front door and arrest you while you're streaming. Like not that's cool, not man. happened, but oh, you have man. to like call your local authorities and warn them that, Hey, I'm a Twitch streamer heads up. If you get any troll calls, like I do, I'm just a normal girl in my apartment. Yes. I smoke weed, but I'm not selling it to anybody. <laughs> and also that'd be kind of stupid. Cause it's, it's recreationally legal here. And also I'm not doing anything harder than that. Cause I ain't got time or money for that. And just like, you know what I mean? So it's like yeah. bad things have happened because of my freedom of speech, if you will. But yeah, I mean, they can't touch me. No one's going to, you know, I've had death threats. I get very uncomfortable, sexually harassed on the DM every single day. I get dick pics. Uh, not that, I don't know who thinks that's a good idea. Like, this is what my dick looks like. And I'm like, cool. And I just send them a picture of a dick I find online. And I'm like, <laughs> Mike, mine's bigger. And like, that's just how I respond. <laughs> is that um, because of your content? Is that because of your content, you think? Or is that yeah, just like totally the nature of Yeah, it's totally because of my content. It's, yeah, that, okay. that's so, like the body positivity stuff, right? Yeah. So the nature of Twitch, that was definitely like the swatting, getting hacked, all the good yeah. stuff. I've definitely have more security things in place. Um, I have, you know, a lawyer on retainer to help me deal with any sort of <laughs> issues, especially with like copyright theft, those kinds of things. It's just like, mm. you know, as you get more popular w- with those eyes come not just, you know, the fame and the glory and the money. Sometimes it comes with the trolls. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> right. I don't know. I'm not too worried about it because I'm not putting all my eggs into, you know, in just the Instagram basket, for example. Like if I get my account deleted, I have backups. You know what I mean? So it's like, yep. yeah, bad things can happen. Bad things have happened, but it's all about getting past it. But I'm not going to let that stop me from making content and art that I care about that I think makes a difference mm. for people. Yeah, because I was I was going to ask you that. So that obviously outweighs the fact that you are you know, every now and then you get um, these horrific things happening to you. So you're obviously more passionate about saying things like it is and supporting those that, that need the support. Because I have to say, because every time I go onto your website, I just get this like, this overwhelming sense. It's like amazing. I don't I don't know if you do it, if, if it's a natural thing that, that you're good at, but you have this like motherly energy about you <laughs> like I like I want to I want to like come knock on your door and say can I just visit for a little bit you know Aww, <laughs> like, that's the nicest thing anyone's ever said that right? because it's like <laughs> I feel so safe it is like there's this safety like feeling that I get when I'm on your website and and it's like you, you care it's like you really give a shit and mm-hmm. and you know it's like that's quite hard to get across on the internet I think um yeah and I think that yeah I think the, the way that you manage to do that without it just being yourself is I mean that says it all but I just think you have to be super brave and I don't know if you really think that you are but I'm just telling that you are because you do it anyway and and even though you get all these hideous things uh, I think it's amazing I do it means that you're doing something right and I really appreciate that was a a really insanely nice compliment thing to say to me I'm not blushing I'm fine I'm not gonna cry this is great um something in your eye (laughs) it's it's so overwhelming um but yeah, I just it just makes you want to fight harder when people are trying yeah. to put you down. And exactly. I don't know, I think just like something got triggered where I was just, I felt like I'm creating my own career. There's, I'm like, I'm climbing that ladder. I'm making up that ladder as I go. So like rules, not, not saying like rules don't apply to me. I'm above the law, motherfuckers. But more of just like, <laughs> you know, like I, I, 
I, I'm in charge of my own destiny. And yep. if, you know, I don't want to work with a kind of a certain kind of client, I don't have to. If I don't even want to do client work, I don't have to. If I want to make products, I can. If I want to talk about subjects that no one else wants to talk about, I can do that. Yes, there's a price that could be paid. I could get in trouble. I could lose my account. But, you know, unless my hand gets chopped off, I'm going to keep making. Yeah, it's exciting. Fuck it. I'll probably use my toes. That'd be fun. And then I'll, <laughs> and then I'll be yeah. a viral fucking sensation. Maybe I'll, like, draw with my belly button. Yeah, like super body positive. Picture you like drawing with your uh, pencil in your teeth and just like, <laughs> like I'm doing it. Me too. Me too. Oh, um, that's excellent. So I, I, I guess like final um, bit on this from me, but in terms of getting there for all the people that are very far away from that, um, you talked about like paying attention to your audience. I'm channeling mm. Ian, by the way, because whenever Ian's on this, he's like, <laughs> I need specific steps, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and you mentioned the whole like uh, advice of be yourself. Um, maybe not being the best thing. I mean, that is literally like what your mom tells you when you're 12 years old and you're like, I want the girl or the boy to like me. Just be yourself, honey. <laughs> and it's like, no, because I'm a loser right now. Um, you know, that that maybe doesn't work. So um, paying attention to, you know, what's resonating with your audience. I totally agree. That's smart. Um, is there anything else? I mean, I know for me, it's been like incrementally pushing into the uncomfortable with the belief mm -hmm. that confidence lies the other side of fear. So it's like the more stuff you do that scares you, you know, it becomes mm -hmm. easier and easier. Has that kind of played out for you or is there something else that you've done over the last few years to get there? I mean, I think that's a really good piece of advice. If it scares you, it's probably worth doing. Yeah. If something's hard, it's probably worth doing. Um, but I mean, another thing is it doesn't always take this 18 hour project that you're going to announce to your following. And I know that whole thing's scary. You can do little baby steps, like maybe show that art in your stories versus putting in your grid. Maybe sh share it with, you know, friends and family, maybe your personal newsletter, or if you have like a group of, you know, influencers or qu creatives that you speak to and build up that confidence from them, from your inner circle first. So that way you can show it to the world. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's always you know, anything that's a baby step. So it's like, if you want to talk about cannabis, uh, maybe just don't use the word weed or cannabis and just show a girl smoking a blunt that could be a cigarette. You know what I mean? Like kind of wiggle in there. If you want to do body positivity, instead of just going for a straight up nude photo of a fat girl on the beach, you know, like maybe do it in a, you know, in normal clothes or, you know, a crop top or something like that. And just, you yeah. know, yeah. baby step your way in there. Um, That's cool. But, and also like, don't feel like you need to be this, like everything has to be overly perfect either. Like my Dear Artist series, for example, is literally just my handwriting. It takes 15 minutes to make, but it's my most viral content because it's just something that's really real. And it's a piece of advice for other creatives. Yeah. And so it's like, it, you know, it took 15 minutes and it's like my most vi valuable content. So that doesn't hurt my soul at all. I'm fine. So, but it's like, <laughs> <laughs> I, it's just something like you could do these little things that don't take a lot of time that are just kind of like, you know, published. Okay. Ugh, what's going to happen? <laughs> and just kind of dealing with that anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm get. go ahead, Dustin. Yeah. Well, I was going to, I was going to say, uh, I think a lot of people might be in a, a boat where I am where, so for instance, I've, I literally will look at your stuff and get inspired by the fact that you're just doing whatever you want, essentially. Um, but I feel like there's things I like that are totally not sexy. And I am not sure. For instance, I love philosophy stuff. And that sounds so boring. Like, I don't know how to exactly integrate that into something I'm doing where people will be like, yes. <laughs> so so what if it's not i mean i mean you know like cuss words and sex and weed and or alcohol or skulls you know <laughs> whatever like all this kind of stuff is like uh, naturally we're pulled to because of that what about if someone has like a more mundane or maybe less sexy thing like philosophy for me yeah i mean it's sexy your... yeah philosophy <laughs> should be sexy <laughs> yeah can you guys tell me how you would look at that I mean, can you give me a specific example? Because like philosophy, like, I mean, like philosophy is a word that people don't actually know what it means. And they think it's, you know, this super uh, higher end education, like you have to go to a nicer college to learn philosophy. And I think one way to make it like more relatable or bring it down to the people is just, you know, take something that's a really common phrase, like a you know, famous philosopher said, and then put it in your own words. I design, it, therefore I am. Yeah. Oh my God. Shot. Look, Tom, kill <laughs> Tom be killing it. Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised. Um, so, you know what I mean? Like, and just start with one little thing, it, you, like just write it down, take a, you know, write it on a post-it note, take a picture of the post-it note, boom, Instagram. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Um, okay. And it doesn't have to be like this big, like, oh, sex or drugs and rock and roll. Like for me, the things that are actually hardest to talk about is when I'm talking about like anxiety 
or my mental health. Like those things scare me way more than like showing a nude woman. So it's mm-hmm. like, and we each have our own things. Like other oh, people so that could true. be, you can be scared to death just to show a portrait just because they don't feel like they're very experienced creating that kind of medium, like that kind of subject matter quite yet. So it's like any little thing can scare us, but that shouldn't prevent us from trying it. And when you're multifaceted, I feel like different aspects of your character will appeal to different people. So with your stuff, like I resonate really hard with like the honesty behind it, the stuff around mental health, the body positivity stuff, but I don't smoke weed, not anymore. So, you know, with that, <laughs> there's the key. <laughs> Maybe should pick Not up again, any Tom. More guys, never <laughs> inhaled. <laughs> um, but yeah, like with that. So I, I get your feed, and some stuff resonates harder with me, and that's fine. So, Dustin, you could be the design guy who also you know, publicizes the fact that you're a philosophy geek, and maybe 90% of your audience don't care about that, but the 10% that share both interests are like, yes, I didn't know that about him. Yeah, and I you mean, know, Dustin, when when you did, sorry, when you did that that uh, a drawing challenge that you did, uh-huh. you always had like, uh, it was quite philosophical. Like you had a whole background, why you did the drawing and that kind of thing. And that was so interesting. And people really resonated with that. I mean, you had a lot of like interaction. So I I don't think that that's, how can that be boring? It's like yeah. philosophy is like what, I think it was more like incorporating of, it into you know? the art was actually like very confusing to me. You know, I mean, and- I really hate it when art becomes more meaningful. You know, it's such a pain in the ass. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it is. It really is a pain. In the ass. I want, I want to do it, but it's like I'm trying to smush it together, and I can't quite yeah. smush it right. Especially I mean, when you're not doing something that's lettering. I understand lettering. what you mean. It's yeah. like how do yeah. I, you know, like then I, then you have to get more clever than I might be. You know, I'm not that clever. How yeah. am I going to yes, do this with are. images? I don't know. Oh um, Dino, I got a real selfish Shit. question for you. Okay. <laughs> so you've been uh, killing it with your coaching calls recently, which we're going to shout out at the end. Um, but I mean, literally, you're getting booked up like back to back. I think you got one right after this, and you're helping a lot of people. And I see you doing so well with them, and I see people posting about the value. And I keep thinking, man, I wish I could be a fly on the wall. I wish I could know what it is you're preaching. And so I'm not, you know, only share what you're comfortable with. But I know when I consult and help people, often it's like a lot of the same patterns and the same things that I'm sharing. Are Mm -hmm. you happy to share some of that stuff today? Yeah, I can walk you through my, uh, it's not like a script, but it kind of is. (laughs) Is it it actually super impersonal? It's It's like, welcome to the call, person. (laughs) I'm... (laughs) No, I it, am just, happy it always to comes down you. to the same things I find like, you know, how do I find my yeah. niche? Where do I start? What's the next step for me? And usually I realize that, you know, people who are trying to sell products or they're trying to get clients, they haven't built up the audience yet or they haven't built up the portfolio yet. So that's always yeah. the first step. So it's always about, okay, like, how do you find your niche? So I usually describe it in, you can niche down in three different ways, even better if you do it in all three. You have subject matter, which is like we were talking about cannabis, body positivity, mental health. We have industry, the food and beverage industry, the cosmetics industry, the sports industry. And then we have services, logo design, branding, web design, like uh, Instagram advertising, like all the different things. Now, you could be very specific in all three of these things. Like I'm going to do only Instagram advertising as my service. I'm only going to do it for lifestyle brands. And I'm only going to be talking about body positivity. Then you're attracting and you're funneling in a very specific kind of person who, if I see on your portfolio, you have a bunch of those samples compared to another designer who maybe only has one kind of sprinkled yeah. in with their jack of trades, who am I more likely to hire? Obviously the person who has the least amount of risk to hire. Same thing when right. it comes to products. If you wanna sell products, the biggest issue I find is there's not a consistent message. Like I don't know how to describe you besides this is cool head lettered art. But hand letter are about what? Positivity? That's not good enough. I need something like sex positivity, body positivity, mental health positivity, uh, female entrepreneurship positivity. Like I need a long tail keyword here. And, and it's so true because if I had a friend be like, man, I, I need a new t-shirt about weed or something, I'd be like, Dina. Like I would yeah. literally, they wouldn't finish their sentence and I'd have your website up being like, go buy it. So yeah, I love it, being it the cannabis queen. That's great. <laughs> like, <laughs> that makes me super happy. Um, yeah. and it, it's working. So that way, I actually recommend designers. I think it's kind of different now is when, I mean, this changes depending if you have an agent and all these different things. But from my experience, when I'm being hired by a client, it's because I'm not attracting those clients. I'm attracting those clients' customers. 
So yes. when they contact me, it's not just, hey, I work for hire and make this thing. They usually want me to showcase the process. They want me to talk about it with my audience because if it's something for the cannabis industry and so many of <laughs> my audience are already like native cannabis users, it just makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like right now I'm making a, a, pr a pride poster that is for, it's also a, a free download or a free print when people buy this new uh, joint pack. Uh, for this one business out in California. I wouldn't joint have gotten... Pack. That's awesome. Yeah. Joint, mm. joint pack project. Um, <laughs> super excited about it. It's like my first paying cannabis client and it's for the LGBTQ community, which I'm a part of. I'm the B. That is it, so, so it's awesome. Just really cool. I can't... Yeah. That's so it's just like, it's like it's like your dream it's like your dream job all meshed into one yeah yeah like That's create cool. the work that you wish existed create the the job that you wish existed if you want to be hired for these kinds of xyz projects just start making those projects and so it's really like coming up with that and then what i call a posting cadence so like using instagram as a major driver to pull people to your website sometimes we'll have a conversation of like well they don't have a very good website let's make a good landing page because if you get a DM on Instagram for like a logo design, people are going to assume that you're cheap because you're using the same template that literally everyone else is using. But your website is the one place for you to stand out. That's where you can be the designer. You can showcase, you know, if I look at a website, I know right away how affordable you are. If you're cheap, your website probably looks cheap. If you're expensive, yep. it probably looks expensive. There's probably lots of content. There's probably full on case studies. There's probably a fact section. There's probably a really long questionnaire. So that's prepping the mind of that consumer of that client okay i'm probably uh, this is gonna be expensive you know what i mean versus mm. just like having packages listed on a website so there's all these like kind of barriers to entry and i know i'm talking all over the place but it's just we have to have our ducks in a row you know what i mean we need to be yeah. really worried about our presentation and our platform which is our website because that's the one that we control that's the one that has the most influence that's the one that has the most protection that has the one that you know if facebook and instagram go down for a day the day that you have a fucking apparel launch I was still able to sell out of my clothes. Like that's something oh, that, yeah, happened. that happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, the Instagram went down the day of your apparel launch. The first time ever oh, you ever no. made shirts ever. <laughs> cool. cool. <laughs> like, love. thanks, Instagram, you fucking assholes. Um, so, <laughs> so that's usually what we're talking about. Um, yeah. Can I do a little shift on Tom's question? So we talked about the consulting thing, which is fascinating and I just feel like because you're so different, like you just have diehard fans. I mean, there's nowhere else to get the Dina medicine. You get it from Dina, you literally have to go there. It's like you're the only person dealing it. So you have to go talk to you. But anyways, I'm going to have to stop it. My, I'm a drug. Thing, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're just, you're not a commodity. Yeah, to jump on that for a second though as well, people are kind of getting it here on the podcast, but it's almost like you just gave away your coaching call value but people are still going to book you because 100%. they're booking that live experience of like you're yeah. there. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. they're, they're not booking you to hear you need to niche more. Yes, that's going to help them, but it's going to be how you deliver it. Like the actual dialogue yeah, you have and, and the motivation like they get. Figuring out what those things are. Like me using those examples, exactly. like that might not relate to you at all. You might want, you might just want to fall, get followers right now. Maybe you're not ready for, you know, services or products and that's fine. And then my advice would be totally different. Yeah. I mean, 100%. I feel like it's, it's just like the whole, like you're the sun, you know, you're the average of the five people you hang out with the most. If you're getting on a call with Dina once a week or once a month for, you know, an hour and doing that, you're absorbing that energy and that way of thinking. And that starts to become, you know, a little bit of you, which makes you like rise up, right? All, all, all boats rise with, with the tide or whatever. Um, so I noticed you do challenges. This has always perplexed me and I'm horrible at these. I don't understand them. Can you go through like what you think makes a, um, I don't know if you call it, you do it as challenges. You did your 50, 50 prompts for like different pieces of art people could do. Oh, could you go yeah. through like, I don't know, like just talk through how to do it. I've always wanted to do something like that, like create something like that. And I'm always intimidated. And when I see you do it, I'm like, oh my gosh, she did it so good. I can't do this. What do I do? Help me. Help me, Dina. <laughs> yeah. I mean, series are really powerful because it, you know, makes a unified message and, you know, anyone will tell you if you're trying to get like a press release or if you want to get, I don't know, more attention on your work, you need a series to really gravitate people. So that way it's not a matter of which one do I, it's like, do I like this artist versus which one do I like? Um, so I think series are powerful on that note. And also if I see something seven times, I'm much more likely to remember it. So if I do a different lettering workbook every month, by the time the eighth or ninth month rolls around, you're probably going to know that Dina does lettering adventures. It does a new workbook every month. It's become consistent because our brains are so like, 
all over the place with the chaos of our own busyness. So <laughs> it really helps when we do repeat ourselves online, especially with engagement rates being low already, you might as well do something more than once or repost your work and all the things. But I'm getting off topic because I just want to shove value in every fucking answer. Love um, it. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> go, go, go. Shove. <laughs> but uh, I try to do it in a way that works for me. Like I cannot do a 365 project. I cannot do a 30 day project. I never make it past day five. I get burnt out. I cannot produce a high level illustration piece every single day. It's just not realistic for me. And I know I'm just going to spend the drain if I try. So I do things that are, you know, weekly or monthly, like the art, like for example, the Dear Artist series that just takes 10, 15 minutes a week. And then that's an easy post for me to have during the week that helps me get engagement, that helps me get more followers that are creatives. The Lettering Adventures workbook was really hard because I was making like a 30, 40 page freaking book every single month teaching you a different style of hand lettering. But eventually you bec- you get a production process down. You're fucking like, like all right, I'm going to make the cover and then I'm going to do the graphics and then I'm going to scan this in. It just becomes, you're just on autopilot. Like a machine. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I think it's just about like what works best for you. Like don't try to do what everyone else is doing. Try not to get caught up in like the different series. Like I can never do, what is it like the 30 days of type? I'm I'm never going to be that kind of person. Um, Just because I don't know that fear of failure is real, but I failed so many times trying to do it. So I just have to realize I'm just not built for it. And that's okay. Instead of just trying to do the same thing, failing and regardless, just like, oh, maybe it'll work this time. Maybe. Hmm. You know? (laughs) So like on the 50 random prompts to draw for people that don't know what to draw, you're putting the prompts into a Facebook group. That's what I'm confused is like, how are you you engaging? You're you're talking like the logistics of it. Okay. So you're talking about this book, uh, 50 prompts to draw for people who don't know what to draw. So I just came up with the prompts um, and it's just a book that's for sale. I actually made it as part of a sponsorship with Blurb who paid me to advertise and advocate for their print on print on demand publishing self publishing platform because I used them before to print out my own zines. So I oh, myself yeah. have not done very many of these prompts. So it's not like oh. I'm like, oh, I'm giving you guys a prompt every single day I'm making a new piece. I just gave you the ideas because I thought it would be a really easy way to make a book and then get paid for a sponsorship. But that's what <laughs> this is about. <laughs> okay. Okay. I misunderstood what this was. Okay. 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 I was like I ain't fucking drawing every day for 50 days. I can't do that. <laughs> but you can. Well, and I'd love to hear that too, because I can't, I mean, I'm, I can illustrate not nearly as good as um, you can, but yeah, I would be so overwhelmed if I had to draw something elaborate every day. Yeah, I, I can't do it. I like, I like the idea of like the team, is it Timothy Goodman or like Adam JK of yes. the world? Where it's like, I like to say, call it like chicken scratch. It's like essentially their handwriting, but they do mm. so well because we have to realize that it's so much more about the meaning behind our work than the skill that it took to make it. I know. Because- so I did this illustration challenge and then I wrote that out. It took me like two minutes and then like it got like more likes and things. I spent like three hours from nine to midnight when I was all tired. And I'm like, <laughs> really? Yeah. Because you have to keep the in way, mind. I swear. Yeah, like we're constantly worried about what other artists are going to think. And those are the people that are the hardest to fucking impress. But an everyday consumer, like how, I don't know how many times you've heard this in your life, but people will say things like, I can't even draw a stick figure. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. I've heard that my whole life. So like it, an average consumer, of course, they're going to be impressed with your phrase. Because again, it's not about as long as I can read the words, boom, design goal accomplished. Do you remember but at school when everyone had to do art class and obviously some people were good at it and went on to do it, you know, further on in school. But there was that age when everyone had to do it. So most mm-hmm. people sucked. And people would come up and they'd be like, oh my God, like, that's amazing. You know, da-da. you'd be like, it's a piece of shit. What are you talking about? <laughs> and it would be pretty terrible, but you're right to the average person who doesn't have a creative bone in their body. is like, yeah, different like that's quite impressive. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. We all have our own thing. So it's like, to me, that's such a a place of solace and makes me feel so much more comfortable in my own skin and my skill set because I don't have to agonize over color palettes and stroke widths and contrast, you know, especially if it's just a personal project that I'm not like being paid to do or anything like that. Something that's not gonna be a product, obviously, but it's like, I have the, I feel like I have so much more freedom and Mm -hmm. I'm able to get more done in less time. I'm finally able to accomplish all the different goals and fucking to-do lists and random shiny objects that are coming on my way on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. It just makes me feel like I have a better grasp on things because I'm not so focused on making that thing perfect because perfection is impossible. Well, and what I I love, like, as I look, what I love is I look through, like, I've been browsing through your feed, feed as we've been talking. 
Um, mm-hmm. And it's not the first time. I mean, I get pulled into this so hard. Um, <laughs> but like what I love about it, and I almost what's more bold than like, you know, um, profanity or, 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 you know, advocating weed smoking, that's obviously like takes balls to do. But you also like, like, you know, when you talked about your coaching, like you just told us right now, like, here's what I go through. Or for instance, I can see a picture of you showing how you took a picture of a mock-up that you put up on your site. You just did it out and like, looks like your back patio. Mm -hmm. And I feel like most Mm -hmm. people just do highlight, you know, it's a cliche, highlight reels of their life. And like, you're like, yeah, here's how I did it. Here, here's my shrub from the back patio, (laughs) you know, like it just makes you feel good because you're like, oh, someone's finally telling me the truth. Yeah, and they're not and they're not like adding sort of smoke and mirrors and ice yes. cream and candy just, floss. That and... takes so much more work. Like it to try to be bigger and better than you actually are to be flexing every fucking post. Like that's ridiculous yeah. and really expensive. And I like to be cheap. I'm really cheap. <laughs> that's how rich people stay rich. <laughs> you know <laughs> like... what, Dina? Like I kind of had the question in the back of my mind: How do you spin all the plates? I think you've kind of just answered it in two parts. So it's like just literally put your truth out there and, and screw perfection. And Mm -hmm. that does sound a lot faster. Like if you're trying to perfect everything, of course, you're going to struggle to get through the to-do list and manage a bunch of stuff. But if you are just putting it all out there and not overthinking it, you can move a lot quicker, right? So so how do you deal with, okay, I mean, we clearly have a lot of personal work to do based on what you're saying and we know, we know we're here. <laughs> I mean, look at the state of us. To each, to each their own, you know? Yeah. But, but okay, so how do you, how did you ever, maybe you never had this issue. Like, do you mm. ever feel insecure when you do look at those perfect feeds of another person in your, like, a, you know, another um, a letter, hand letterer or another illustrator or whatever that you look up to and you go, oh my God, they're, they're so perfect. And yeah, I'm showing my, I don't know, a piece of shit. I just want to follow them. <laughs> I just want to okay. follow them. Okay. So you, you I'm, with, <laughs> I'm, with yeah. I'm so you with you. Just go yeah. and follow really untalented people, guys. If you're listening, you feel a lot well, better. I actually give the advice all the time about like, there's a fine line between inspiration and intimidation. Yes. You know what I mean? And if you're yes. seeing someone and like, if they have a bunch of followers, like, okay. So I always tell everybody like Lauren home is this person for me. I love her work. She's a stellar fucking person. I've talked to her before. She's helped me out to promote women of illustration. But when I see her feed, it just it's makes insane. me angry. I'm like, <laughs> yes. I'm like, why? So like, how do you have so many follows and likes? And how do you do this? And how do you have your color palette? Why does everyone like you so much? And I'm, like, <laughs> I'm so glad and you just, say that. Cause I agree. Like there's some nuts. people that just create anxiety in me. And I'm not even joking when I say I have I to take understand. a couple of Klonopin, and then I have to talk to my therapist. Like there is people <laughs> online that my therapist knows by name now. Because I have to talk my way through them. <laughs> if I need a new man, to look at their stuff. Like we've literally gone through guided meditations where That's they're like, hilarious. bury this person underneath a pile I of crap it. and never forget about them, <laughs> or, and forget about them. So I love it. Um, we hey, we need I, to I talk off air because I still don't know who these people are, and I'm so curious. <laughs> <laughs> and you never will because I'm burying it deep in my subconscious, and then I'm letting it okay. decompose. <laughs> but I have to I have to quote this thing from you, Dina, because it's so good, and it talks about like doing these things. It's your latest Instagram where you just wrote words. Mm-hmm. And she said, dear artists, you have great ideas. You just take too long to make them happen. You get stuck in the planning phase and you never get to the fun part. Yep. Dude, isn't that like the truth? <laughs> <It's pure sense. laughs> yeah. I'm glad you're taking it. Yeah. It's just it's so true. It's so 100% true. It and is. that's why like I mm-hmm. fall like I do feel anxiety looking at your stuff sometimes because I'm like, oh, my gosh, you got so good so quickly. Um, but that's okay. You, you make me feel me. good because you feel vulnerable <laughs> to me. Like I don't feel like you know. You think you're better. You're trying to like you know pull a fast one on me. You just it makes me feel good to look at your stuff. Oh, that's that's the fe- that's the feeling of intent. So that's good. That's the <laughs> yeah. point. I want that. Um, I just people. It's okay. Like we're all at different experience levels. We I can't imagine someone who's just starting out being an illustrator. Like don't compare yourself to me. Because as long as I keep going, you're never going to be able to catch up. Okay. Right. <laughs> right. Um, but in the same thing with people who are, you know, more seasoned than I am. Like, I can't expect, like, to be Aaron Draplin. You know what I mean? Even though people call me the female Aaron Draplin, and I'm not quite sure how I feel about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I'm like, all right. I mean, I'm thick, but I don't... You can see my beard <laughs> through the camera. Is that what's happening? Like, I know I got I can... some Puerto Rican whiskers down here, but seriously. Um... <laughs> you got the spirit a little bit. You got this, that same little spirit of rebellion but, in you. 
Yeah, I love I love watching his talks. I've seen him like so many times, mostly because he's like at every conference. There was like three years with his book, like back to back coming out. He's just like at every conference doing a talk <laughs> all the time. Um, but yeah, it's just it's OK to unfollow people like they're not going to notice. Like, it's fine. Like, we shouldn't take follows and unfollows too personally. And yeah. just there's enough room for all of us. And mm-hmm. I keep saying that so fierce, like so fiercely, because some people feel like it's too competitive. Some people feel that this niche is, you know, too saturated. And my advice to you is it only feels like that because, again, you are in an echo chamber. I actually mm-hmm. don't follow that many artists because they intimidate me. Instead, I follow subject matter pages about guess what? Cannabis, mental health and body positivity, because it helps me mine their content to figure out what hashtags are they using? How are they talking to their audience? What's the tone that makes the most sense? Like what, mm-hmm. what memes are popular right now? And how can I yeah, take that to help inspire my own work versus being inspired mm-hmm. by other artists? So just yes. having a different I love pool of influence. Dina, you're my spirit animal. Aww. <laughs> I, I feel like so cute. We're being so, <laughs> I want to give him a cuddle. <laughs> we are being really like fanboy, fangirly. It's so I'm awkward. not trying we're, to at we're... all. I just really no, no, no. But I'm like the same, so man. Good. I'm in the same boat. I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan, and we've become those awkward people we talked about at conferences where they just come yeah. up and don't have a conversation. It's like I like you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, get away from me. Really. Um, well, she lives in Portland, so she's close to me. So you know, I, gotta, I know. I, I gotta <laughs> and I'm moving the, soon. The I'm moving soon, Dustin. I'm gonna get real far away from you, so you gotta where? come over. You're going to Austin. <laughs> where? No, I'm not going to Austin. I'm going to uh, Menominee, Michigan, a very small town. And um, I don't look sad. It's to help the community. They don't even teach art at high school over there. So we're going to start. Yeah. Wow. And like I talked to a couple girls that um, they had to pay $150 per semester just to take a high school art class because That's they don't insane. have the budget for it. And insane. the only idea of like them being able to make a living as an artist is a tattoo and to be a tattooer. And that's all that they have over there. Mostly mm. because internet is spotty, especially since it's such mm. a rural area. Like I told her about Skillshare, like, oh, why don't you just use Skillshare? She'd never heard of it before. And that like blew my mind. Wow. So it's just like they lack resources and it's cheaper to live there. <laughs> like I rather I'm going to go from middle class, to upper class overnight. <laughs> <Just Yeah. living laughs> we'll get coffee with me before you go. Let me take you to dinner yeah, yeah. sometime We're or lunch or something oh, yeah. before you leave. Take me to take me to dinner. OK, <laughs> let's do that. <laughs> I really Please. miss my hair, so I just have to pantomime my hair flip. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for you. anyone who's not watching the video, we're getting some mimed hair flicks. <laughs> they, they I'm give bald me life. now. I've shaved my head, so the hair is, has been removed. Mm-hmm. It feels um, amazing, but I still miss the drama of the hair flip. <laughs> yeah. Do you know I got a challenge for you? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so, first of all, I've kind of mentally signed you up for a new series um, that we're doing, so I really hope you say yes. And it's to inspire creatives because the whole comparison game that we just talked about, it's so common, Mm, right? And so we're starting a new series called Design Evolution. And it's where designers basically go back to their first piece on their Instagram or whatever, and then talk people through there to present to Mm. show the journey. So we just had James Lewis on episode one. And I think by the time this is published it should be out and he was awesome because he he literally showed from doing like rough sketches when he was at college to like and then I got a bit better and then I tried this style for a bit and then like here's when I saw a massive inflection point and then I started doing this and to see how it took years and years and years I think is really fucking cool so the challenge is can you condense your creative career for us now into like a minute maybe into a minute years? okay I thought you were going to say like a sentence. I was like, no, no. I practice a no. lot. So, <laughs> no, no, so like, if, if you take us from like amateur hour, Dina, like early stage Dina. Yeah. I'll try. all the skills and so on. I'll, I accept now. your challenge. I feel like I need a timer. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, no, don't, don't worry. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to time you and I'll start waving like a maniac when it gets near the end. Oh, I don't like it. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait. That's and, just, yeah, I'm going to challenge you. Like, let, let's go for one minute and speed talk away and go. <laughs> okay. Um, um, so I started uh, doing hand lettered logo designs because that was the first easiest way for me to be a lettering artist. And actually my original business was called Logo Juice. 
Um, I did that. Actually, did it, my first project was doing an Indiegogo campaign for $20 logos. Like, yeah, that was me. I did that uh, just to gain more experience. And that was right around the time I'd moved to Portland, Oregon. And then quickly I was learning like new styles, wasn't having to heavily reference other typography pieces. And it was horrible. It took a long time. The letter S was my nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I could not figure out that bitch no matter how many times I practiced that S curve. It was very frustrating. Um, but hilarious. it wasn't until I started taking that first master class by Sean West, the mastering hand lettering class, that I really learned. This is how you draw the letter A. The thicknesses go down. Like, this is how you do script and really figure out how do I pair this? What's visual hierarchy? And I'm like, okay, these connections are coming. I'm able to draw longer phrases. And then I start to challenge myself. And I make these workbooks. After a horrible experience being self-published and not getting royalties off of a book that I only got paid $20,000, where I should have actually gotten more like $200,000. Oh. Um, yeah, I got screwed. Very inexperienced designer. Aww. And that's what lettering adventures became. And it was through teaching other people how to not only market themselves, but draw those styles is what really made me feel like a master of hand lettering. And that only took about five years. And then only in the past year started drawing people and plants and naked ladies and weeds and, and weeds and bongs and all the good things. And I have no idea what I'm gonna draw next, but it's probably gonna be crazy. But I nice. It. That was good. That was, that was pretty good. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> so i guess in a nutshell did you go from like starting out to relatively successful design career in about five years and then you're saying it's been like the last year where it's seen like a massive inflection point up from there through all the stuff that we've talked about so far today is that yeah. like a fair summary yeah so i started doing lettering in like 2012 uh -huh. so did math. you have background before that like had you done design stuff and yeah so i went to uh school uh, for a digital arts and design program in Full Sail University in Orlando, Florida. Uh, $100,000. Yay. Um, <laughs> and, you know, became a jack of all trades graphic designer, worked at great places like ESPN, Disney, uh, Universal Studios right out the gate. Hated it. Incredibly corporate. They made you wear pantyhose <laughs> to work oh, in no. 90 degree in fucking Florida. Like, I ain't fucking wearing pantyhose. You crazy. No, <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not kidding. That. They give you like a code of conduct book, like psh, like Disney, like this big, and how you can dress, what you can talk about, what you can do. That it's very. Insane. Although it's very I do, crazy. I do remember, I do remember two years ago at Creative South. Remember we we had the walk down to that like little um, three four place where we were all eating southern food. Mm -hmm. Remember we walked yeah, down, yeah. we were chatting, and I remember like that was our first time talking. You were explaining what you did, and I remember you telling me about. Um, even then, you were starting to dabble in very lightly and just being different so like you were like i'd see a piece like somewhere on your instagram where it's like people are always like the mountains are calling so i must go and what was yours it was uh, my bed is calling and i must go <laughs> right <laughs> so you were dabbling in like this and it seems like you just kept amping it up yeah baby steps right like you take a common phrase you make it into a funny pun that's more relatable to yourself and then you're like okay maybe i'm gonna start cursing okay maybe i'm gonna start talking about things that i don't really tell many people about um, and I, I, I think, you know, as an artist, vulnerability and empathy is our strongest tool mm -hmm. and yeah. you have to kind of own it. When was that conversation, Dustin, Creative South, like three years three ago? Three years ago? Something yeah. Something like that? I mean, you were already oh. hustling. You had a good marketing chops and, um, yeah, you were like, you could tell you were already feeling like, I know who I am. I'm not taking trips to the mountains. I'm not, I'm not setting up tents. <laughs> I think I've been full-time freelance for like maybe a year or something like that at that point. So I had my last job, I was a social media marketer and graphic designer and I made them make me a social media manager. Uh, and I went to like Marketo conferences and I got AdWords and Google Analytics certified and like any possible training and marketing possible. And then as soon as they like ran out of money, I was like, bye. <laughs> and I left. And then I took all of that marketing knowledge to start oh, that's Letter so Shop. Oh, smart. I yeah, that. <laughs> hey, they, do, they would do the same for you. They'll suck every bit of your creative juice out of you, and then they'll throw you in the garbage. So you might as well just do it to them. I mean, mm. hey, what's they could fucking fire me whenever they want to. Like, exactly. I don't owe yeah. them anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. If if shit gets tough, I, I, they can fire me. Just like if I want a better life for myself, I I don't feel weird quitting. Like I yeah. thank you for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. I made you a shit ton of money, and now it's time for me to make a shit ton of money for myself. Yeah, exactly. I love it. That's right. Yeah, I'm so glad you touched on the marketing experience there because that's the stuff that I feel is often hidden when people look up to people like you and it's like, oh, that's great what they're doing now. It's like, 
you might not know about like the internship they did or the job position they did or work in the nine to five they hated. Like I, I'm obsessed. That's why we're doing this new series, but I'm obsessed with the early stage because mm. that is normally what people don't get to see now. I mean, we now. all went through like, shit, didn't we? I yeah. mean, it doesn't just like, happen. This it, show, it, right? We, how much have we talked about when yeah. we're like teenagers or in our 20s or whatever, working mm. for shitty clients and getting abused exactly. and working for no money and all that horrible stuff. And people always resonate because it's more relatable for most people. Mm. I yeah. like it. Um, all right, so Dina, you make money, right? <laughs> all, yes. all about the benefits. If I'm, if I'm lucky, I okay. make money now. I do. <laughs> um, can, can you touch on that side of things? Like for you, like as a creative, okay, I'm the Oliver Twist of the creative world right now. Okay, got a bowl of gruel, not you a penny have to, to my that name. To us Americans, Oliver Twist of the creative world. Is not the <laughs> I was like, I think I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so like, I'm a poor young designer, Dina. All right, and okay. you know I've got talent. <laughs> You've got to help me. How do I make some money from this thing? I mean, there's so many different ways. I would say just try them all and see what works. Like, it took me a long time. Like, nowadays, products make the most money. I think, why not try to do a couple print-on-demand products? Don't use Redbubble. Don't use Society6. You're going to make pennies unless you have a really substantial audience. But that's a really good way for people to want to support you, especially if they really enjoy your art and then they can kind of be a walking billboard for your brand. I think products are amazing. Apparel does do better than printed goods from experience. So just a heads up, guys. Mm -hmm. um, uh, things like uh, you know, what's to stop you from teaching? Like it's such an easy way to have passive income, to do digital currency where, hey, I just learned how to build a website. Why don't you share your experience? Like, hey, you got popular on Instagram. All of a sudden, walk me through that. Um, that's a big part of my brand. And that's how I was able to anchor myself as somewhat of an authority, even though I had no idea what the fuck I was talking about, but it was just more of like, I tried this, it worked. Maybe you try it. Um, how do you sell little things like that? So for instance, typically people sell big courses, right? And mm -hmm. something I love is that you, you create little tiny, little tiny chunk things. Cause I think you're like me in the sense that you can't keep it going for six weeks. Right. So yeah. you do something mm -hmm. in this little package that you can handle, which is exactly how I feel. So where do you feel is the best way to sell these like little things? Like if you want to make a thing on how to do a certain very small thing, do you have a favorite platform or a way to approach that? Um, I think natively on your own website is the best way. You don't mm -hmm. worry about Etsy taking a cut. You don't have to worry about like a bigger company taking a cut. Um, it's all you. You control it. And also it's way easier to tell people how to use your website than someone else's website versus, you know, things like Creative Market, uh, other resources. Um, or if you're using, um, what is that one? That's like, starts with a G, Grumpy, Gumroad? that's wrong. G yes! Oh my God, you got Gumroad from Grumpy? You're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah how did you get that? On <laughs> so are oh, you using yeah. Squarespace and then just having people check out through the built-in yeah. checkout or are you using a WordPress yeah. plugin? Um, I don't like WordPress. It's kind of like something goes wrong. Is it the app? Is it the fucking, is it the domain? Is it the template? Mm. It's just so frustrating. Uh, Squarespace is. is awesome. Um, yeah, so using just Squarespace because you can have a digital good. Uh, when they check out, they get an email. That's a good 24 hour link for them to download that good. Um, and that's how I like a great side hustle has been these lettering workbooks. I finished them. I did 23 issues. It's really funny. I was going to do one issue every month for two years. Did not have that 24th one in me. Couldn't do it. Couldn't bring myself to complete it. Um, and it's <laughs> like, I just couldn't do it. Uh, but now I'm repurposing those and I'm adding like Photoshop mockups and all these in uh, additional video tutorials and like making it you know, kind of redesigning the them a little bit and tweaking them. So it's like, you know, just so selling that on my own website versus any other platform just works way better. So what about Patreon though? I know you use Patreon a lot. What, mm. what do you like about Patreon that makes you use that as opposed to not the others? Like, why don't you just do um, Patreon stuff on Squarespace? Well, Patreon takes a cut. So Patreon takes 10%. So 5% is patrons fee and then five percent in processing fees which is pretty normal uh and then th they just change their packages so if you sign up for patreon right now you're going to get a worse rate than if you had signed up like a couple months ago and got grandfathered in oh. and that's what happens when you use a, a platform that you can't control just like youtube kind of sucks it's really hard for people to get monetized there that's why i'm always like advocates like i think patreon's great but you have to keep in mind, it's not a discoverability platform. So it's not like Etsy. Like, oh, I'm going to have my stuff on Etsy. I can get natively discovered on Etsy. You can't do that mm. on Patreon. It's all about your audience. 
So Patreon's really good if you're just lazy, I guess. Like you can start a podcast and have an RSS feed on there. You can upload digital goods for people to download. It's kind of like another Instagram. Like you can, so that way people never miss a post from you. It's technically a free newsletter because people can just follow you on Patreon. And every time you post something that's free, they get it versus like MailChimp. You know, you, if you have more than 5,000 subscribers, it'll, they're still charging you and they charge you based on mm. subscriber. You don't have to worry about that for Patreon. So that is kind of like a, okay, that kind of, I'm, I'm, it sounds nice. But when the second you get like <laughs> your dollar patrons or $5, $10, then they start to take a cut. So I only have low tiers on there. So I have $1 for access to my, what I call my secret art diary. No podcast stuff. which is very vulnerable i cry i cry at a lot of them <laughs> i'm like i'm lonely and this is hard and but people really like it and resonate with it there's a shit ton of content it's like one one to two episodes a week and then seven dollars you get the workbook which is nice because it's 50 percent off than the full price it is on my website so that's a really easy way to do like a subscription and then i have 15 dollars, which is like access to our discord community where people can get feedback on their work just chime in and talk to other lettering artists but wow. i don't go higher than that like I used to have my coaching, for example, on Patreon that was like, it was really cheap. It was only like 50 bucks um, at the time so to talk cheap. to people. Like, I noticed that. An insane amount of time. But I'm the nice kind of person thing. who believes in like supply and demand. So now my rate's changing for a 30 minute session is now $75. Yes. So but I, I took that off of Patreon and put it on Squarespace because, you know, 10% of $50, ugh, like yeah. that's five bucks. So it's like, and, and you know, it was doing so successful. I pulled it. So... I think there's pros and cons okay. to using all these platforms, but if something's working really well, put it on your website. Okay. <laughs> One more question and I'll stop dominating the questions. I'm just so fascinated yeah, by all this. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'll, I'll literally like stop. After this. You guys are funny. You like, you interrupt each other. Like what? I'll, I'll be like, halfway answering this question. I'm like, well, wait, Dina, this go. I'm like, this is fun. Can we, can and I there's come normally back? Normally when we have an interesting guest on. No, 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 I mean, it's like someone talk. Want, someone ask a question. I want to come back. This is fun. Yes, please. Yeah, come back. Um, yeah. Okay, so another question, because you were, I think, I I get the sense you're good at this. Um, <laughs> and, but maybe I'm wrong. Like, sometimes I feel like I think I know the inner workings of how someone's doing things, and then they're like, no, you're completely wrong, no, and then I learn you something. you idiot. Um, <laughs> I feel like you are very good at repurposing or... Um, repeating content so you're not constantly creating the brand new thing like mm -hmm. I, I guess maybe a better word is leveraging a piece of content over and over in a variety of ways yeah and can you teach me how to do that right now please <laughs> <laughs> and right. uh dina feel free to send over the uh 375 yeah, dollar invoices <laughs> after the session <laughs> <laughs> well actually this has gone over an hour so ah! oh, Tom's got it. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Uh, hey guys, just do me a follow. Follow me at Lettershop and Instagram and it'll pay for itself. Um, okay, so uh, talking about repurposing content. So something that makes me feel a little bit more comforted is no matter whether you're using your newsletter, you're using Patreon, you're using Instagram, there is a low engagement rate. There is a low open rate. More than likely, you could repeat yourself five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times and still more than half of your audience no, does not know that thing exists. So we need to get out of our mindset that I can't just plug and play. I can't just repost this thing. It's fine. <laughs> like, especially if it's been a couple, like if we're talking about Instagram specifically, if it's been a couple rows, like no one's going to notice. Or what if you just change the background color? Boom, new piece of content. You know what I mean? Um, and it, when it comes to like repurposing passive income, like, you know, the workbooks or something, it was more of like Patreon and getting like a substantial like two, $3,000 consistently every month just from Patreon. Okay, this works. This makes money, but I don't enjoy doing it. I, I don't want to do these workbooks anymore. So I, I really had to sit and think, well, how can I keep offering this service, a new workbook every month without hating my life? So mm. I was like, I'll just make them better. So I started, I was like, I, how hard is it to make a Photoshop mock-up? And then I was at my mom's house for Christmas. She has Southwestern everything. It like threw up in her trailer. And <laughs> so it was the perfect place to take like this Western photo shoot and she's got these beautiful she's like 67 like these beautiful hands i have her hands and i love how wrinkled and, and aged they are i think it's gorgeous just taking a photo shoot with her did a mock-up not that hard I'm like okay this mock-up only took me an hour maybe two hours to do but doing an entire new workbook that takes six to eight hours maybe 12 depending on the style if it's lowercase uppercase whatever so i'll just add that to it and maybe i'll do like a free tutorial because i need to have free content in order to get paid for my content 
So it's like, I'll teach you like this week, for example, is all about how to make your own book that you wished existed using 70 script, which is the, the workbook of the month right now for a Patreon. So it's like, I'm going to do that. So it's just like, second there? yeah. So just like uh, this and this and this and this and this and this. You and said this I have this. to create mm-hmm. free content to make money from my content. I think, I think that makes sense. But can you explain that further for people? I bet some people are like, wait, what does she mean? Yeah. So a lot of marketers will tell you something about like an 80, 20 rule, 80% of your content needs to be free where only 20% of it is paid. So for an artist, this can look like personal projects, kind of similar to my dear artist series, which is handwriting. I'm not asking you for anything. Maybe if you want to share it to stories, that's it, but I'm not asking you for money. So you're, Mm -hmm. you're igniting that rule of reciprocity. I buy you a coffee. You want to buy me a coffee. So it's like, if I give you, um, you know, five free tips on how you can grow on Instagram right now, you're much more likely to trust me than if I then sell you a $500 course teaching you how to grow on Instagram as an artist. Without that free piece of content, there's nothing to anchor me or make me feel, again, just like a client alleviating that sense of risk. You know what Brilliant. I mean? So we have to do a free thing in order to get people's attention because there's so many other people who are like, give me your money. Please mm. buy this new yeah, bra. Everyone. It'll make your boobs Everyone's look amazing. Like, do this. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm like, okay, stop. <laughs> like, just, I, just I think we can all verify. Content. It's kind of like the Costco sampler, um, yeah. co- Costco sampler business model in you know, Tom made the good point that um, if you give people a bunch of free stuff, you'll just get a, a list full of people that just want freebies. But what you're talking about is very different. It's giving people a little taste of a much bigger, awesome thing you have, which is a very different mm-hmm. thing than just randomly throwing freebies. Oh, well, exactly. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's, dumb, br- that's great. It's, it's done with intent, right? Yeah. There's a difference. Yeah. And there's different ways you can do it. Like, the like the video t- the t- article that I just wrote like teaching you how to do the work uh how, how to t- teaching you how to do a, a book cover it teaches you how to like put the st- you know the letters together how to make a phrase how to do your grids and composition but you don't know how to draw the lettering style so it's yeah. like if you want to pay the seven dollars if you become a patron now that's pretty cheap and then you learn the lettering style you get you know learn it each by step by step and then you take the tutorial or if yeah. you know if you're listening to this in May, then you have to pay full price into my website. So it's like, but it's still a pretty low, <laughs> pretty low, in- you know, barrier to entry. So it's kind of like, course. okay. Yeah. So it's and like, also the import- I think the important thing as well is a lot of people forget the free stuff shouldn't be shit. It shouldn't be crap. You know, no. it should still be the good stuff. And um, it's just kind of like an intro to. Because you know, they'll the assume package. that's what's inside. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And and it's weird how I think artists get that wrong. Sometimes, oh, I'll just put my, my, my junk that, that, that I can't sell as the freebie. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I mean, they get that wrong because that, that's mm-hmm. kind of like your intro to yeah. this person. Yeah, well, and then do you like, know, sound oh. familiar? <laughs> We've been talking about this stuff. Um, yeah. Cool. So Lisa, I think Dustin and I have like shouted a bunch of uh, questions at Dina. Dina, have you got like five minutes? Yeah, I have I'm a for? meeting in 15 or a little bit less than 15. Oh, okay. So good. Um, Actually, I think so, she canceled. I'm going to check real quick. Go ahead. Okay. Ask me. Um, yeah, Lisa, do you want to yeah. um, take the floor? Because Dustin yes. and I have chatted okay. so much rubbish uh, this episode. So, <laughs> so ask, ask um, away. Yeah, I, I, you know, just as I said, being in and out of your website, it kind of like there's so many topics that you talk about that I struggle with as well. And one of them is being patient when like you have this goal like where you want to be and along the way there's like i mean i think you 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 call them like sort of shiny things shiny object <laughs> like, yeah yeah exactly um how do you like what's your advice to people because i know i'm not alone um i suffer from that usually like i get distracted all the time and what happens is like i know i've got i've got a plan i've got to supposed to do x y and z today and instead i find myself spending 5 hours on a new technique that i wanted to try out for my drawing <laughs> and before you know it the whole day's gone um yeah, it's so difficult to stay on track. How do you do it? I, I, yeah, I can't well, get my head around that. So. More recently, I have I have dedicated art and marketing days. So it's like yeah. Monday is an art day, Tuesday is a marketing day. So if a shiny object comes in, whether it's an idea for a drawing or it's a better way to market my content, I just add it to the next marketing or art day at the day. end of my oh. to-do list. This okay. is good for a couple different reasons. One, it gives me time to look back and see if that shiny object idea is even still good anymore. Because sometimes I'll get like a really cool idea when I'm stoned alone in my apartment at two in the morning. But, yes. you know, to get me in the light of day, I'm like, oh, that's a bad idea. Don't do that. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> um, you know, so I think that's good yeah. for one thing. And also it helps you organize your time. Like 
because my treat is making art. And I kind of, I don't know about you guys, but marketing is the thing that makes money, right? So it's easy for me to get lost in the marketing hole for a long time and then wake up and then it's been two weeks and I haven't drawn anything. And then I feel like, who am I to consult or give advice on how to be an artist if I myself didn't pick up the pencil for so long? Yeah. And um, I tell everyone, you're an artist for as long as you're picking up the pencil. If you haven't picked up the pencil in three months, you're not an artist anymore. You lost your right. You lost your title, your badge of honor. So it's like, but you don't have to like work for three years to be an artist is the point. Uh, So it kind of works both ways. So I think that's really helpful. And it helps me organize my time too, because it's going at the end of my to-do list. So knowing that obviously things that take priority, like client work, you know, patrons, like things I actually get paid money for and apparel launch, those things will always be in the forefront. But I still have Mm -hmm. time whether it's on the weekends or something like that to work on the shiny objects okay like, so in other words you're saying you're super disciplined because i try to be yeah <laughs> oh, i mean i still okay. fall for it like the other day like someone pointed out like a misspelling in my website i don't know how to spell i don't know how anyone knows how to spell it's hard I, like there's so many grammatical errors and everything i make i just don't care it's free stop complaining um <laughs> so I, <laughs> so i was like changing Do you tell something them that? Do you yeah, tell them that? I do. Ah, yes, yes. <laughs> and also, I love misspelling things okay. in my content because then I get like 20 comments saying, like, Dina used the wrong then. I'm like, thanks for the free engagement points, suckers. Um, <laughs> so that's like a weird, <laughs> like, that's how much I don't care. Of course, unless it's client work then uh, or a product, then obviously it needs to be spelled right. Sure. But for the most part, I don't care. But yeah, so yeah. I like went down the rabbit hole. I'm like, I'm going to change the colors on my website. What if I change this font? Okay, what if I change it? And then I got, and then I did it for three hours. So like, I'm still susceptible. Like, I'm not perfect. Okay. But for okay, the most good. part, like, don't think that, please. Very far from that. But that process, and this is like the newest thing of the flavor of the last two weeks, but it's been working. So... That's been really helpful. And I use like an app called Todoist, which helps a lot too. Yeah, yeah. Like, because I love you that seem app. to get like like so much done. I don't I don't I don't understand how you get so much done. Do you delegate, do you know? <laughs> I don't del- I mean, r- my boyfriend, I hired him and he helps me with women of illustration um mm-hmm. a lot. Like he that's pretty much like his territory. Like I pick out the content and then he writes the captions and the hashtag strategy for everything. So if you DM me on women of illustration, uh, you are talking to Rick. <laughs> um, okay. If you DM me on Lettershop, you're talking to me. Uh, that's the only thing that I delegate out, but everything else is it's getting over that perfection mindset. It's better to have more meaning than for it to be perfectly executed in, in Photoshop. That helps yeah. me a lot. Having designated days. I'm also full-time freelance, so I obviously have lots of time. I don't prioritize client work. I only maybe work with one client a month, so I can have time to have my lettering workbook series, to have my Dear Artist series, to have my own podcast, to also host Women of Illustration, to also make products and release new apparel, to do all these different things. And I wouldn't have it any other way. I like staying busy. And also, I don't have a lot of friends, so I don't have a big social life. I'm not. There's not a whole lot going on. It's me and Grey's Anatomy right now. Well, so you got three like... new friends here. What can I say? Yes. I mean, Dustin and you are going on like a secret rendezvous as well. So, <laughs> all right. And, and I'm a marketing guy. I I don't I don't even like do coaching stuff. I literally just sent you an email begging you basically to coach me if I can afford you. I don't ever do that. You literally <laughs> sold me on talking to you. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Link in bio, guys, on Instagram if you want to book a coaching session with me. Where I get booked up. A, uh, so link in bio for Instagram if you want to sign up for coaching with me. I actually made like I don't use Linktree. I made my own Linktree. So if you could just go to my website, you get all the links. And Ooh, that's uh, yeah, cool. nice. Yeah. Awesome. Um, that's very cool. Book a, book a Le- Lisa, have you got a final quick question? Um, oh yeah, um, I've been meeting in eight minutes. Ah! Sorry. <laughs> okay, well, Super quick. okay, so so just from a female point of view, okay. um, how do you? I don't know if you ever come across like do you, do you ever feel like, uh, how do I say, intimidated that you're a woman in quite a strong male dominated industry? It feels like. Well, I, I mean, sometimes I I I I'm like I feel strong like a strong woman in in what I'm doing and then sometimes I get intimidated that that you know that we are often kind of sidelined for certain things like do you have any advice for young female artists yeah. that want to like you know well, follow their own voice yeah I think a big part of it is again who you follow um like, I really mm. only feel like that when I go and I leave my house and I go to like a conference or a talk or something like that. Yes. But when I'm in the security of my own studio, I feel yeah. the bravest I'm ever going to feel, the strongest. Yeah. I can say whatever I want. I mean, you know, if I'm on a live stream, I say something wrong, I could just end it. And I love that. Um, yeah. But it's just, you kind of have to do it anyways. Like, I know that's such like, just feel the fear and do it anyways. That's a poster mm. that we made. Um, <laughs> but 
it's you can't let it intimidate you. You have to try. Mm-hmm. Like, even though sure. women make up the majority, we're 60% of the artist community, less than 10% of us are featured in podcasts or featured in panels or featured exactly. in talks. Mm-hmm. And it, it's why? Crazy, right? Yeah. And it's like, and I know a lot of women, you know, choose to, you know, be a mother and take care of their family, but that mm-hmm. doesn't account for that lack it of doesn't. <laughs> fucking uh, yeah. visibility for women. Yeah. And that's the whole reason yeah. I started Women of Illustration. Yeah, so mm-hmm. it's like, I think everyone should start a curated Instagram supporting female artists. There can't be enough of it. Like, you can't t- talk about it enough. Like, that that 10%, I haven't changed it to 12. It's still that same percentage. So yeah, it's just like, exactly. you just got to keep showing your work and showing up every single day and mm. try to be fearless, even if it's a total fake front. Like, just do it anyways. <laughs> I love I'm that. with you. I think that's I love a, it. that's a really cool uh, note to end on. So on that note, Dina, you've been the best. Thank you so much for jumping on. Where can the lovely listeners go and find you and hang out? All right, everything's letter shop, two P's and an E. Uh, so Instagram is my main place, but just in case I get deleted, just visit me at lettershop.com. <laughs> sign up for my <laughs> newsletter. You're gonna get nudes. <laughs> you're gonna get uh <laughs> things that support obviously body positivity cannabis and mental health uh up to two three times a week you're also gonna get free resources for creative uh teaching you all different kinds of things and not just lettering but the marketing behind it so you can actually make a profit from your passion um and that's really the only place i want you to hang out because it's the one that i control so hang out with me there <laughs> i love it dina thanks again uh, I'm, mm. i got a ton of value i know these guys did i definitely know the listeners will have and so we hope you come back sometime. Yes. And I, I want to come back all the time. Anytime Ian's just not here, just invite me. Like, I'll just be his replacement. Like, I'll just hang out. <laughs> I'm glad you like... finished that sentence. I thought that was like, <laughs> I, I don't want Ian to be here. <laughs> He's on my own. Like, there's too many list. lettering artists in here, and I need to replace you. No, um, no yeah, I'm just saying. I, I'd love to come back. Email energy a little bit. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, but I love Ian, though. I, I miss him, I'm, but. I'm just saying when he's gone, guys. Maybe we need five, <laughs> we need five people on the show. Yeah. <laughs> done. Consider it done. Hey, if you want to, I, I will. I will add a third podcast to my to-do list. That's how organized I am. I can do that. That's not overwhelming. That's fine. That's great. <laughs> I love no, it. I mean, Dina just gave us the stats, right? Yeah, this podcast is 75 percent men, and I'm not okay with that. So, Ian, it's been Thank great you. knowing you, buddy. But we got Dina here. <laughs> More female representation. If Ian listens to this, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean it, buddy. We all love you and cherish um, you. No, Dina, we'll definitely have you back in the future. Thank you again from yeah. all of us. Let's clap it up for Dina. That was pretty awesome. Yay! Nice. Always a pleasure. That truly. is it from us. Um, Dina, in one of your incredible kind of voice note styles, I'm going to put the pressure on here. Do you want to do the sign off for this episode? Normally it's like, we'll see you guys next time or something like that. But we haven't okay. perfected a good sign off. I feel like we should just sing. And we should just yes. sing. All okay. right, let's okay. sing it okay. out. I'll, I'll, I'm I'll snap it. my fingers. All right. Goodbye. Farewell. Goodbye. We'll see you next time on the Honest we'll Designers Podcast. We'll see you podcast. next time. See you next time. <laughs> we'll see you we'll next sing. time. Say, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. I love that. So Woo. much. Uh, I want to be like, can we get some hearts in the chat? There's no chat. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks so much for listening to this week's episode. As always, you can find full show notes over at honestdesigners.com or find us over on iTunes and now Spotify by searching for The Honest Designers Show. And remember, we're now on social media too, if you search for Honest Designers. If today's episode helped you, then it would mean the world to us if you took just a moment to leave us a quick review over on iTunes, as this is one of the best ways for other designers to discover the show. Thanks again for tuning in, and we will see you next week right here on The Honest Designers Show.